when did it really start to spark uh, in you this photography as uh, as as a, a means of expression and discovery for you? That would have been the first time I took the camera out on an actual trip. The first thing I think I did was was come up to the mountains and hunt waterfalls. Nice. Take pictures of the waterfalls, and so that was. I mean, it stuck with me at that point. Well, where did you go to learn during that time? I and mean, were you flipping through? Uh, the outdoor photographer of the time or, you know, magazines or what were you doing? I started subscribing to Outdoor Photographer the first year it came out. And like so many people my age, I started out learning from the greats, uh, Galen Rao, John Shaw, Larry West, people like that, reading everything that I could get my hands on. The big turning point for me in mm -hmm. fact, it's probably the major turning point mm -hmm. in my photography mm -hmm. was when I realized that it was okay to not believe what I was reading. Mm -hmm. That I could make my own decisions and that if I witnessed something, if I saw something or experienced something that was counter to what I was reading, it didn't mean that I was making a mistake. When I realized that, then I really started, I felt like I started to, to be able to make photos. How has photography affected you personally? How has it affected your um, view of the world, let's say? Photography is a, um, an excuse, a reason, if you will, to get out of bed in the morning and see that sunrise mm. and to stay out for that sunset when maybe you'd rather go in and have dinner or something like mm. that and to hike that trail that maybe you wouldn't hike because your knees aren't feeling good or something like that. But you do it anyway, mm. and photography is the mechanism that keeps you on course huh. to, to do that. So we see and experience as photographers the, the natural world in a way that others don't. My waterfall books, for instance, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for those, then I wouldn't have seen you know, a thousand waterfalls in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, you know, there's no way that I would have gone to them. You know, mm -hmm. just wouldn't do it. But because, okay, I'm working on this project. I have to get this photo. I have to do this research for this waterfall. So it forces me to go. And in the process, of course, I'm seeing other things and experiencing other things. And I'm happy when I get back. Well, Kevin, tell me about a specific time in the field with your camera where you thought, I am really alive discovery of a waterfall that I suspected was there but had to hike in you know to see no trail whatsoever mm -hmm. get to the base of it it is an absolutely gorgeous waterfall no sign that any other human had ever been there I know I'm sure that there were hunters and fishers I'm sure had been there but um, it was not something that that the that the photo crowd had gotten to or even the hiking crowd hmm. did not know it is this and I'm standing there and the conditions are just perfect you know every everything is just right and that was a was a really good feeling well what are some of your pl favorite places on earth I have traveled abroad I've been to other countries and I'd like to do a lot more of that but when I talk about favorite places pretty much it's where I'm living right now in western North Carolina hmm. the mountains of uh, Western North Carolina and the waterfalls. Gosh, I just love it. One image to place over your mantle. Tell us about that one. A shot that I took of um, fireflies in a mm -hmm. jar. Yes. Set up a few years ago, and um, as far as I've never seen another another shot like it. It's one of those those night photography things that I create in my mind before I before I shoot it. Hmm. But when I was shooting the Milky Way part of it. Um, so I had to shoot the jar first with the fireflies and focus on that and then I had to refocus on the background which was the sky and do a separate layer for that and when I was shooting that one as I was exposing the biggest meteor I have ever seen in my life went right in the perfect spot in the frame. What would you tell them to uh, keep in mind as they are getting started with this uh, this journey that we call photography? Yeah. The turning point for me hmm. when I realized that it was okay to use my own mind and think for myself. And I would encourage them to do that. Now, I've noticed that with young people, um, they already are doing that. They hmm. don't know who John Shaw is. They hmm. don't know what the rule of thirds is. They don't know not to center their subjects. 
supposedly. Type they don't of. even know what the rules are to break, is what you're saying. Exactly. Right. So they're just out there doing their thing, and they're making some really cool photos along the way. Yeah, they're making some horrible ones too, but so do I. Mm -hmm. But they're making some cool things. They're not bounded by any type of, of set rigid rules like old people like me you know, tend to get bounded by. We do. We have to really work hard to not hmm. restrain ourselves in that manner. Hmm. So the young people are doing good with that, and I would just encourage them to, to continue to do that. It's okay. Don't let anybody tell you that it has to be done this way. Just do what you like, and if you do that, eventually you're going to come upon some, some course that you can follow. So, so you'll have your, you know, your own identity in your images and in your photography mm -hmm. for doing. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. You're quite welcome. Thanks, Paul. I enjoyed it.